this is supposedly a podcast about the Internet of Things, and and one might ask, what the heck has sustainable fashion got to do with IoT? But I think there's a lot, and I I think it's there's some technology and um, there's some business reasons for the overlap. And uh, before I join Willie Ott, which is um, the, the people that uh, that's my day job, the people that uh, that, that allow me to do this. Um, semiconductor company, cloud uh, sensing as a service company. Um, I started a, a company called Cause Based Solutions, and the premise was, you know, we should try f- and find ways of making a profit that actually make the world better, uh, and that way everyone has more fun. We can feel better about it, and and rather than you know giving back being virtue signaling, it can be a way to make a living, and that really will be sustainable and. Uh, positive thing. And I really feel like um, there's an opportunity with sustainable fashion on its own. But I think when you start to bring some of the technology that we're working on, which is essentially a a computer the size of a postage stamp, it uh, powers itself by recycling, by harvesting radio frequency energy, suddenly you can give a, put intelligence in clothing and identity. And one might reasonably ask, why the heck would you want to do that? It's clothing should be about texture and fiber and uh, feel and color and cut and uh, all these things. But um, I do believe that technology has something to offer for uh, circularity. And uh, the Sustainability Consortium recently did a study where they tried to look at how often people wear something. And if you think about it, we have some fundamental problems with fashion. Uh, One is people make fashion and they don't know whether people like it or not. They know, obviously, you know if people buy it and you'll have seen, hopefully, eventually, I, well, you probably won't see it, but I did buy your, um, uh, uh, your red, one of your red sweatshirts. And I think I'm going to like it, but let's face it, neither of us knows whether I will do. And unless we keep in touch, you won't know if I wore it once and then thought it was a terrible mistake or if it becomes, (laughs) you know, part of my weekly rotation, favorite thing, and I wear it for the next 30 years. So I believe that bringing IoT, uh, this kind of postage stamp, sustainable, battery-free computing, integrated in for pennies into the care label, will allow, um, with the appropriate permissions by the wearer, some people won't want to do this, some pe- people will. If if the wearer is interested in having a relationship with the designer, then that designer will know, oh, this person's been wearing this constantly and we did a good job. Or, ah, there was, obviously there's, there's something wrong. And in, in the unhappy circumstance where the wearer doesn't like the thing, but maybe others will, they have a way of certifying, oh, I only washed this once and uh, you know this is the provenance. Uh, and uh, maybe wardrobes can be a little bit m- more like Uber or Lyft than, uh, than the kind of the old model of you buy it and that's it. You can have kind of more of a uh, fluid movement of clothing through your wardrobe and the clothing can find the person that loves it and maybe they'll be happy together. I'm sort of talking about subscriptions to clothing, rental of clothing. And, you know, I think one of the things that stops people buying more, certainly in my case, is my wardrobe's full. I've got no space to put stuff. And if we had a better mechanism for uh, adding some intelligence to clothing so that you understood um what you like, and you had a easy mechanism for getting money back and finding a home for the things that maybe aren't a good fit. Maybe it's a great item of clothing, but someone else would uh, appreciate it. And so I think that's where that's where the opportunity is, and the building blocks to make this crazy idea happen are, are actually pretty close to hand. Uh, washing machines now have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in, they can energize and read these tags. And so clothing can communicate how often it's uh, washed, which would be of direct interest to someone that's thinking about buying it and giving it a a second home. And I think 
you know, ultimately when clothing gets to the end of its life, one of the challenges with recycling, which is kind of the last resort for clothing, it's much better to find another home for it, less wasteful. Then um, there's a future um, uh, where the waste disposal companies, uh, waste management in this country, in, in the US, do a much better job of recycling because there's a digital identity that can be easily read and you know that clothing can be disassembled and um, uh, and and recycled more appropriately. So that's my little soapbox moment talking about how IoT and fashion can come together. I'd be interested in any thoughts you have on that. Uh, be you know be brutal. Uh, there's, there's a lot there. Uh, I'm very very interested in, in the idea of clothing subscriptions for one. Yes. Clothing rental. I mean, clothing rental makes so much sense especially considering the price of some things that you would only want to wear a couple of times, or you really will only have the opportunity to wear uh, it, particularly expensive stuff. Like there's some stuff that I, I see that I just think, God, I would love to wear that to a party and stuff. And then, I mean, well, the coronavirus hasn't been ideal, but you know, how many parties do you go to a year? You know, maybe at best, if you've got a very full social calendar, it's going to be like 50 a year, but like realistically, it ain't 50 a year it's like five to ten uh maybe uh so you know and and of those like what are they gonna be like what are those parties gonna be how often are you gonna be able to wear something flashy so clothing rental or like weddings for example you know if you get invited to a wedding and it's like summer suits well i don't have like a linen suit at the moment you know i had a bad one that i got made in vietnam that like mm -hmm. looked a bit kind of crap really it's not been cut very well uh, I would love to go to this wedding because it's uh, going to be a swanky wedding at the weekend. Uh, I would love to go wearing like a nice, you know, proper uh, linen suit. But do I want to spend £600, £700 on that? Hmm, maybe not. If I could rent rent a really good one for 100 quid, that would be very interesting. And I guess it would kind of be more sustainable as well. Totally. And then in terms of uh, technology, uh, technology in clothing, uh, I, I've seen that a lot of companies uh, are doing things where you can track the supply chain with little chips um, and all of that stuff. That's really interesting. Uh, I, I would, Absolutely. I would sign up right away. Uh, I just don't have the budget at the moment. Uh, yeah, minute, yeah. minute I do, you know, I would love, like, I, I see companies like Pangea spoke. I've talked about these guys. There are other companies. Uh, I mean, Harry's uh, shaving company was a, quite a big inspiration for the kind of way that I wanted to do things. That's of course a subscription-based company, uh, as it should be, you know, for for shaving stuff. But the point is that a lot of these companies have have just had more budget, more uh, opportunity than I do. So I'm working within quite a restricted uh, framework in terms of what I can make possible. But there are a lot of great ideas, and that that technology tracking stuff in your clothing uh, for the supply chain for where it might end up that's pretty revolutionary. I, I agree, and, and I'm really glad you mentioned the supply chain because uh, you know we uh, we're getting to a point where we're sufficiently funded where we actually talk to we have a PR company and they're like, don't talk about what's going to happen in the home because you're going to freak people out. But it's actually the supply chain bit. It's the bit between the the mill uh, where the fabric is made um, and uh, and the store that has so much room for improvement. Uh, there's a lot of clothing that is just dumped because um, because too much was made. Uh, and then, you know, um, getting the right piece of apparel in the right store is, is a nightmare. If you're a brand, you have zero visibility typically of um, the inventory in the wholesale channel. You, you, you get kind of this uh, bulk purchase from you. But Imagine a world where you get a real-time view of um, the inventory levels in every store that's stocking your apparel. And you know, one of the biggest obstacles to selling something is if it's out of stock, if it's not there. And God forbid someone nicks one of your items of clothing, then you know, let's say there's a really great suit that you make, um, and it's not selling. Uh, you know, it's not selling in Regent Street. The Regent Street stores should be selling it 
And it's like, oh, they obviously don't like the suit. No, they love it. And people stole it. And the inventory system didn't get updated. If you have a digital ID that's associated with the apparel and brands can actually be omniscient if they can see what's in stock in um, in the different stores, then they have an opportunity to, to, to make less stuff, but actually have more of it in stock and sell more of it and have less uh, returns, uh, less wastage, there and and I actually think this is a fundamental part of how we address climate change is by cutting um, capital employed in inventory by ten or twenty percent. Let's make ten or twenty percent less stuff. Um, uh, what would that do to the environment if um, we made ten or twenty percent less stuff and then compound on that? What happened? What would happen if people actually bought, spent exactly the same amount they are, but bought less stuff? They bought the um, they bought the 600 pound suit, the thousand dollar suit. And then when they started to grow out of it, as some of us do, uh, they, it finds another home and then they have the money to buy another great uh, suit. This is, uh, this is the future that I believe in anyway. So um, thanks for giving me a good excuse to, to pontificate about it. I appreciate it. No, no, I, I, I really share that, that view. I think that that is the way forward. I, I don't see the appeal of the way that a lot of people uh, are currently doing things. I think it's just easier, isn't it? And 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 also the technology that's making this possible is only just uh, uh, you know coming into its own. Uh, RFID uh, has been around for a while, but the infrastructure was super expensive, and this battery-free Bluetooth stuff that we're investing in uh, is, is very new. So I think it's going to happen. Uh, we have. Uh, if I look at our customer base, we've got over 30 of the largest companies in the world that are in our early adopter program. And uh, four of them are fashion companies, uh, which is amazing. So we have like pharmaceutical companies, CPG companies, but we have some amazing brands that, that I think see it. And it's going to take some of these giants to move it, to get an ecosystem in place, um, which I think has to work across companies. If you're going to have wardrobe management, it can't be Versace wardrobe management. How many, you know, that doesn't make sense. You want something that works across Hugo Boss, Versace, uh, LVMH, yeah, you right. know. Uh, um, and then that's a platform where entrepreneurs, boutique designers can slot in and they can can put in the the, the hooks. That it'll be like the app store but for clothing. It'll be like Netflix, but for clothing. And you have big artists and small artists that are making stuff for Netflix. And I think that's that's the way it's going to go, personally. Thanks for watching this clip from the Mr. Beacon podcast here on YouTube. You can listen to the rest of this episode on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed it, please like and share this video. And be sure to subscribe for more weekly videos. For more information about Williot and IoT Pixels, head on over to williot.com.